Hi, I'm Doc Harmony. Welcome everyone to the second annual Health Chicks Wellness Summit. So great to be here again. So great to have all you back again and all you new people. Thank you. Make sure you guys sign up with the Facebook group. Get your VIP passes because you want to keep this information forever and ever. So today we're going to dive deep into magnesium. So what is magnesium and what do you, why do you have to have it? So I'm Doc Harmony and I'm with Healthy Energy Amazing Life and we're going to have fun talking about this today and you're going to really realize why this is so important to your health, your vitality and your well-being. Magnesium is extremely essential for good health. It is the fourth most abundant mineral in the body. Magnesium is in the bones. And a lot of people don't know, but it is a prominent role in aiding in muscle and nerve function, immune support, blood glucose control, and regulating blood flow. Also, I think it's important to know that magnesium helps fight chronic illness such as Alzheimer's, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. My favorite, though, is that it helps with cramps. How does magnesium, though, help with illness prevention? And I think that's really important to know that magnesium is one of the main seven macro minerals along with sulfur, chloride, potassium, sodium, calcium, and phosphorus. Macro means that we need to consume these minerals through diet in large quantities. We need about 400 milligrams of magnesium per day, but regrettably, only the majority of people get a fraction of this. And in certain conditions like pregnancy, breastfeeding, when you have a poor diet, weight loss, and intense workouts, it's really when you need more magnesium. Yes, magnesium is that important. Remember, it's on our element table that we all learned in school. It is the 12th element in the periodic table. And it is an alkaline earth metal, but more importantly, it's involved in over 600 cellular reactions. Luckily, all it takes is topical magnesium to get your daily requirement. Wow, look at this list. So you can see very clearly how magnesium contributes to a great many physiological processes in the body. And I want you to take a screenshot of this because I want you to remember how important magnesium is. It's important to the utilization of your vitamin C, your calcium, your potassium, helps with blood pressure, blood circulation, migraines, muscle cramps, PMS, anxiety, stress, so this is such an important, important element for your body. So let's start with like the one that is most obvious, muscle spasms and pains. Oh my gosh, I used to have muscle spasms so bad in my legs that I couldn't even sleep until I discovered topical magnesium. I am very committed to rubbing on every day my magnesium and making sure that I massage it into my feet and my calves, but we'll talk more about that later. As you can see, most of the magnesium found in the body is stored in the tissues of the body and we're deficient in it, it will develop cramps. Regrettably, if you're deficient in magnesium, also you can have frequent headaches and even migraines. And this is really, a lot of them are caused by magnesium deficiencies. I know that sometimes when I have had magnesium, just a, a migraine or a headache building up, I just always kind of rub in some magnesium, the oil, the spray in this area. And so far I've been really lucky and it's, it's really helped a lot. Um, I know that the migraine is widely thought of as a disorder of brain excitability by Richard Lipton. And as you read this, you could see that the magnesium blocks the release of certain neurotransmitters in the brain, including glutamate. And so, but as your magnesium levels increase, the brain will become less excitable and therefore less prone to a migraine. 
So that's why that habit of just topically using your magnesium daily is just so important and will, act, will make a really big difference in your daily life. And I know, especially for us, lady, those those mood swings, PMS, and just that up and down. And and really, you know, if you find that yourself is being triggered or irritated easily, look at these magnesium levels. And yeah, sometimes it's really important to get tested. But as we know, sometimes those tests aren't really reflective. There's just such this wide range and, and you might fall in the normal. But like I always say to people, try the magnesium, take a bath soap. You know, use it on your feet and your calves daily. Just massaging it in and increasing those magnesium levels really has helped stabilize and, and calm so many females and be able to help us to just have that calmness in our life and not the dramatic roller coaster up and down. And, and yes, that is pretty miraculous to me. You know, and so often we just feel so weak and fatigued, you know, and I've really discovered that a general feeling of unwellness, continued discomfort, weakness, tiredness, these are all symptoms of insufficient levels of magnesium in the body. And, and that, and we're going back to the transforming of glucose and the energy, and we're going to talk about diabetes, and that this is really a reason why it's so crucial to have adequate levels of magnesium. So... I think that it's really important to examine your magnesium intake, especially if you have a feeling of weakness and fatigue. Even magnesium can affect your heart, cardiovascular, blood pressure. You know, if you have an irregular or prolific heart beating, it could be from insufficient levels of magnesium. This mineral plays such an essential role in the appropriate functioning of the heart muscles and the heart's neurotransmitting system. When the magnesium levels drop, it can have a negative effect on the whole cardiovascular system. So this is another reason why magnesium is so important. As we were just discussing about the heart and how important magnesium is for the heart, it's also important for hypertension. Now, this is really common for a lot of people, regrettably, and that's due to stress, lack of exercise, and unhealthy diet that everyone else here is going to talk loads about. But, you know, magnesium really, really helps promote the flexibility of blood vessels, and, it, it, and the insufficient levels can lead to hypertension. And they even did a study and that showed that women under 200 milligrams of daily magnesium, it increased the risk of your hypertension. And wondering why you can't remember everything or where'd you put those keys? Interestingly enough, insufficient magnesium levels also attribute to learning abilities, concentration, and even our memory can deteriorate. It's also really important that this that it can intensify the buildup of certain toxins in the brain, which, as we know, leads to serious, serious issues like Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's. And last but certainly not least, one of the main things that insufficient levels of magnesium can contribute to is diabetes. You know, magnesium is an essential nutrient with, for people with diabetes as it helps regulate the blood levels, blood sugar levels. You know, and as we know, type 2 diabetes is often coupled with a magnesium deficient diet. So, you know, the primary reason behind magnesium deficiency is low or inadequate amounts of nutrients in the diet and excessive rates of, of micronutrient secretions in the kidneys. So magnesium really helps tremendously with people with type 2 diabetes. And it's just such an easy, easy thing to try. You know, but I think it's really important, you know, what is causing or contributing to this magnesium deficiency? Well, regrettably, those fizzy drinks that we all love to drink, consumption of candies and cookies because that increases our sugar intake, caffeine, Stress consumption of beverages with caffeine. Regrettably, catch-22, taking diuretics, heart medications, 
asthma medications, birth control pills, or estrogen replacements can absolutely affect our magnesium levels. And excessive alcohol consumption. You know, that really, I understand that glass of wine at the end of the day. Make sure it's only one, ladies. We got to keep those magnesium levels up. And, you know, a lot of people misunderstand the calcium-magnesium ratio. And they're just taking calcium supplements that don't contain magnesium or contain magnesium in a less to one-to-one ratio. Those are some of the things that contribute to magnesium deficiencies. So how much magnesium do we need? So as you see our chart on, on the PowerPoint presentation here, that everyone needs different amounts of magnesium at different times in their life and depending on if they're male and females. So basically, it's an average of like 320 milligrams for females and 410 milligrams for males. So when we're pregnant, though, remember that there are different levels that we need to maintain in higher levels. So what's really important to know, and which is really fascinating, is that our bodies are not capable of producing magnesium, and we do need to supplement. You know, interestingly enough and regrettably, 80% of people suffer from magnesium deficiencies. A lot of this, and I know we talked earlier about what is causing magnesium deficiencies, but I didn't really address one of the major culprits, which is modern agricultural food processing, which causes our diet to be deficient in essential minerals. And no matter how many vegetables we consume, it will not be able to provide us with enough magnesium that we need. And so it's really important that we have to take lifestyle changes so that we can increase our magnesium levels, you know, especially when it comes to our alcohol and, and our medication consumption. Now, just because it's going to be impossible to get all of our magnesium needs from foods, that doesn't mean we don't try or give up. On the slide here, you'll see some foods that we all love and we all use all the time in our diets, hopefully, and that are really high in magnesium. Bananas, spinach, flax seeds, almonds, peanut butter, avocados, and I know you guys and ladies out there have a lot of great recipes making some great smoothies and some great dishes with these ingredients. So double, triple up on them. The conclusion was fantastic. There was a 22.7% increase in blood serum magnesium versus the placebo group, which only had 4.11%. So a lot of people don't know, but transdermally, topically, taking in magnesium is way more effective than taking in supplements, which have to go through the whole entire digestive tract, and you lose a lot of it that way. So let's talk about leg cramps and how topical magnesium can help with this. It actually is one of, it's almost like Arnica, you know how miraculous Arnica is. Well, Magnesium topically being used when you have a muscle cramp is just miraculous. I have never gotten to the count of 30 and the cramp was not alleviated after I've rubbed in and massaged in some magnesium gel or some lotion. So as we know, magnesium cramps occur when there's an involuntary contraction of the muscle. And so a lot of people have these in the hamstrings and the bottom of their feet, their calves. I've actually even had them in my stomach. It is very, just tightens up and cramps is very painful. So now, muscle cramps are one of the most common symptoms of a magnesium deficiency. And something I learned while studying all about magnesium, as I became fascinated and more fascinated with it, is that when you crave chocolate, that is also a symptom of magnesium deficiency. So anyways, muscle cramps can also be linked to alcoholism, hypothyroidism, or diabetes. And thankfully for, that, for us, most doctors recommend the use of magnesium for people with muscle cramps. However, I would like to add, since we just talked about our study and how we can get 22% more efficiently in our systems, that how using magnesium topically will be even more dramatically successful for you.
And I would be totally remiss if I did not talk about stretching. And once again, this goes back to, and this is what's so great about this health summit. It's a reminder that it's whole health healing. It's physical, it's mental, it's emotional, it's spiritual. It's everything combined into one. And so magnesium, yes, it works great. But let's add some stretching with it. You know, when I stretch it and I'm doing my stretching exercises every day, especially as I age, it makes a huge difference. And regrettably, magnesium deficiencies for people over 60 increases. And it's so important as we age, especially menopause, that we get these proper levels of magnesium. We're stretching, we're listening to our bodies and as we age so that we can age gracefully. Let's talk about magnesium during pregnancy. So important. Magnesium, as we know, is just so essential for our body and it promotes the functioning of over 300 enzymes. During magnesium, the body's need for this mineral, this master mineral, increases and the need for it. Also, magnesium deficiency, regrettably, and it's important to know this because you can fix it. It increases the risk of spontaneous miscarriages, premature childbirth, and malformations. It is also linked to high blood pressure during pregnancy. And as we've said before, our bodies cannot produce magnesium. And so this is why it's so very important topically, all my you know, pregnant women that are in my life, I just like gift them as much magnesium and the flakes and the gels and the lotion to make sure that they are getting the proper amounts and the adequate amounts of magnesium for a healthy, healthy pregnancy and baby. And so it's so important how much magnesium should be taken during your pregnancy. So let's talk about that for a minute. You know, before conception, and it's so great how everybody's just planning and just really recognizing the need to take care of your bodies before pregnancy. Great. And just kudos to you guys. You know, increase your magnesium by 10 milligrams for every 2.2 pounds per day. And then, of course, during pregnancy, it's the same. We want to have that increase of 10 milligrams of magnesium. And then, you know, about at the end phase of your pregnancy, you can gradually start lowering that consumption or that topical absorption down to back to normal levels. Of course, I would be remiss if I did not say consult with your doctor, your gynecologist, and anyone else that you need to for, for these requirements. And just for a little added encouragement during our pregnancies, you know, there's been a, you have, during pregnancy, there's a lot of abdominal cramps, a lot of tightness, contractions, mood swings, headaches, and all of this could be a lack of, of magnesium in the body. And so once again, what an easy way to be able to increase your levels of magnesium and have a very healthy pregnancy. And last, but certainly not least regarding pregnancy, you know, magnesium uh, deficiencies can lead to hypertension, which is what we talked about earlier. But also during pregnancy, hypertension is very dangerous and it shows up as preeclampsia. And so for more than 25 years, please know that magnesium sulfate has been applied successfully for the treatment of preeclampsia. And that's why going back to when we know we're gonna conceive during that pregnancy, using topical magnesium and making sure our magnesium levels are up. And if you do have the occurrence of hypertension during pregnancy, a daily intake of three to 600 milligrams of magnesium is recommended. Now be aware, what are those symptoms? Headaches, edema, visual disturbances, heightened reflexes, abdominal pains, muscle cramps, muscle twitches, proteins present in the urine. So work with your doctor, make sure that your levels are being tested and make sure that you are applying your magnesium topically. Please take out a daily break every day and soak your feet in magnesium flakes. You can even put one or two flakes in a bottle of water, eight ounce bottle of water and sip on that all day. It's very important and I think that 
as we can tell now what, how helpful and useful magnesium can be during your successful pregnancy. And, and now for the most important part, how to increase our magnesium levels using magnesium topically for very quick and efficient restoration of our intercellular magnesium levels. And so it's really simple. There's just not a lot of instruction. Your oils. We have oils for sensitive skin. We have oils with OptiMSN to help the magnesium penetrate through the skin. Basically, you just put it in the palm of your hands and you just massage it into your calves, your feet in particular. I like to really concentrate on those reflexology points and then put your socks on and you're good to go. And so one of my very favorite ways to, to use magnesium to increase my magnesium levels is using magnesium flakes in the bathtub. Now, while I do love soaking my feet in the magnesium and talk about an excellent affiliate, ladies, for, well, men too, for your feet, I wish more of the pedicure places use it because it just makes your feet baby soft anyways, is in the bath. Using, I use about two to three cups of my magnesium flakes in the bathtub, and I just love it. I also use um, essential oils at the same time just to enhance the experience. And it's really important though, you want that water to be warm, but not hot because we want to absorb the magnesium. We do not want to be in the tub sweating and eliminating. And so that's kind of important. This is very different from an Epsom salt experience in the bathtub. So enjoy your bath. So after you've enjoyed your bath, it's really cool. You can also use your body lotions and body butters. And these are just excellent to use. Uh, they're actually my daily moisturizer. I use them every day. I use them on my hands, my arms, my feet, my legs, my face, everything. I also at nighttime use my magnesium good night body uh, lotion as it has melatonin in it. So it's just, you know, at the end of the day, that extra stress, just kind of trying to work it out. And I use my magnesium with my melatonin lotion, and that is just amazing. Uh, and it just, I use it about 30 minutes, or I might, you know, take my shower, put my magnesium on, and it just really makes for a good night's rest. And an extra treat that you can give yourself when you go get that massage is take along your cooling massage lotion. I do. It makes that massage so powerful and wonderful. And my massage therapist just loves it and actually implemented it into her daily practice. And so there's not much to say here. It's just a gentle usage of your, your gel and the lotion in, during your massage. And so I'd like to close here and just thank you, ladies, and everyone here for just being accountable for your well-being and for being open to learning and nurturing and being a part of a community of women. We have Kim Ballas. We have Jennifer Pressamone, who has returned, as well as myself. Of course, Windermere. We've got our new Lynn, Lacey, and Tiffany, and just all the wonderful knowledge that they have to bring. And thank you, thank you for, for participating in this second annual Wellness Health Summit with, with us. And I just want you guys to know that there will be a special code for you all. It will be a 15% discount for all orders that come out of this healthy summit. I just want to encourage you guys for health, wellness, and well-being. Thank you so much for having me again. I am Doc Harmony. I am with Healthy Energy Amazing Life. Heal. Heal your life. Heal yourselves. Heal the world. Ciao.